The teacher librarian, in many respects, particularly going back to that early time in, in primary school, and I know a lot of primary schools don't have teacher librarians, um, I think that we are doing those kids an injustice because they need someone who has a passion for it. We've seen a huge um, change and an increase in actually borrowing from the library since when I came here in 2013. We, it was Olivia's first time here and the first time the school had had a teacher librarian in about eight years. So a huge increase in borrowing of books. So not only doing that, a love of literature itself, but also uh, information literacy. I think also too, um, if you don't, I suppose not having a teacher librarian also is not that knowledge about professional readings for teachers, but also a hub for parents to be able to come to, with, to their school library to read and enjoy books with their children, um, which is that first step in the, in the parent-school relationship. From my experience of 45 years, teacher librarians run their own little, it's like a, it's their own little world. The library, it's their own world and the librarians fiercely sort of protect that. And so when the children enter through the portals of the library, uh, they're entering into a world of enchantment. And I think the teacher librarians fully know that. Um, they're trained to be it that way, to, to offer advice and help the children in their book selection. Um, it, it's such a valuable kind of key, the interaction between the librarian and the student coming in, no matter what age, what, what, no matter what year. And that is to be treasured. You need a teacher librarian and a great school library that gets kids excited about reading and excited about learning so that that can continue as they become lifelong learners. Then as they move through primary school, it, it does need to become about how to challenge themselves in reading, how to find the right books for them to keep that passion and then how to extend it into their learning of research and information. Often when um, we're allowed on the computers during break times and stuff just so we can work on our homework yep. and she often comes around she says so what are you working on and if like for example I was working on an essay she'd be like so is it on for example bushfires and she would say like there's some books on bushfires over there if you would like to read them or if you'd um, here's some helpful websites you could go on and she also teaches us that um, what websites are safe and which ones are not. I think people think that kids and students can just do that naturally and they really can't they need to be taught they need to be explicitly taught the skills to do that and to find the information they need for me in, in a primary school setting as well this is really important because yes there's information out online but for the students here the, there needs to be the right levels of readability. They need to be able to read that information first of all. They need to be able to understand it and sort of critically evaluate whether it's the right information, if it's come from an appropriate source, whether it's accurate. And so I still think it's so important that there's printed information books because those information books have been developed specifically with those needs in mind to meet the needs of primary school students at certain reading levels with certain visuals and certain structures. And so there's still definitely a place for those kind of books.